Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I was actually going to update my Sal Mangry deck and upload it to my channel yesterday, but I decided to wait. And honestly, I'm kind of glad that I did because I completely forgotten that Rising Rampage Special Edition came out today at my OTS shop. So I decided to stop by there and get the new uh, Sal Mangry Coyote, which luckily I managed to pull one. And yeah, and also I had to make some drastic changes to the deck overall anyway because of the way the meta has shifted. So I kind of reviewed back like what are the strongest decks right now, like how do you best deal with them, how do you deal around with the new cards from the um, the Gold Sark 10s like Nibiru or Dark Ruler No More. And honestly, like looking into Salamangre Coyote, he actually fixes some of the some of those issues with Salamangre anyway. And I'll get to and I'll explain like why as I go. So, yeah, I just worked out some of my ratios, and honestly, I like the way this deck runs. I really do. So, let me go and show you what I got this time around. Alright, so starting off with the main deck, of course. I'm going to be playing three copies of Salamangry Foxy. I'm really happy I got these in Prismatic Secrets. He definitely deserved it. There's your Pot of Duality, basically. And he also has a cool graveyard effect, which helps you pop a floodgate, so just a good way to get around those. Uh, three Spinny. I definitely want to play this at three now, especially because, you know, you're going to be running Flame Buffalo and Signet Mining. Now, of course, you're not required to play Signet Mining. I have mentioned that you can use cards like Signet Backdoor, which also help search out Gazelle a lot faster. And he's also, he's also got a good uh, discard effect where you discard it and give one of your salads 500 extra attack points, so definitely a good card. And, yeah, and the Graveyard effect is just a free summon, so figured why not just get into that Mirage Stallio. And he just basically helps you turbo that out. Now for the one it's got one gazelle. Everyone already knows what this does. It dumps all your salad cards, and it's just a free summon. It's the reason it's at one. Now for the new Salamangry Coyote. Now this is what this card does. It has two different effects, both which activate during the end phase. So, of course, you can only activate one of his effects once per turn. So, you can either target one salad monster in your grave, special summon in defense mode, or you can target one salad card in your graveyard and add it back to your hand. So this card has two separate effects depending on which one you choose. Um, so, and again, it only activates during the end phase. So if you link a moth, let's say for Bay Lynx or Sunlight Wolf, uh, it, it just gives you a free body or recycles one of your spells and traps. So and that's actually not a bad thing because with Sunlight Wolf, you're kind of like tight on what you want to recycle and what you want to add back to your hand. And then, of course, with a Sal with Salad Coyote, he just lets you, you know, extend that choice also the fact that you can also get a free body on board at the end phase is not bad too so just a good way just to get more uh just to boost up your defenses basically all right so moving on we've got one jack jaguar one falco and one foul everyone already knows what these does so yeah and that's it for the salads let's go ahead and move on to the cybers monsters got to play three flame buffalo this card's actually really good just draws you cards draws into more of your spells and traps or your hand traps rather you know, it's just a really good combo piece, you know, a good way to start off your combo, basically. Of course, got one Lady Debug, another good way to search out your Gazelle or any of your other salad cards that you might need. And, yeah, that's it. Now, of course, I took off Backup Secretary because I wanted to make room for more uh, control-based cards and just extend my hand trap count, so that's why I decided to do that. So, I mean, eventually I could always bring it back, you know, it's like, it's not like you, you don't have, you don't need to run it. You can run it if you choose, so choose. It's a good extender piece, so... I just chose to take it off for right now. I'm playing three Ash Blossom, uh, three Effect Veiler, definitely need these. Playing two Ghost Ogre, uh, it's just really good for non-targeting spot removal. It's really good against Pendulums because you know you want to hit that Servant of Endymion or the Electromite, you know, whatever you need to hit. So uh, next up, two Ghost Bells. So Ghost Bell is a little iffy on this one. I was I wasn't sure whether or not I was gonna like it, but so far it's been working out. Uh, it's a good way to counter cards like Called by the Grave, because people are always going to go for that Jack Jaguar, or even that Coyote now, once they see see it being used. So, Or try to get rid of Gazelle for good, and you definitely need that Gazelle. So I feel like this is going to be one of the best ways to stop that. It also stops Shark Cannon from the Sky Striker deck, because, you know, they can't banish it. So Ghost Spell is just a good way to, you know, counter that. So that's one of the reasons why I'm running... Uh, Ghost Bell and Honda Mansion. And also, I don't think it's going to be a bad pickup. Definitely for like, I think the cheapest you can get it right now is like four bucks. So if you haven't got a playset of this, I would definitely recommend getting it right now. Alright, so now we're moving on to spells. I'm playing three Sign It Mining. And like I said, Sign It Backdoor is another good option. Or you can just play Pot of Desires. Pot of Desires also helps too. And the fact that you're playing a lot of three of us, I really don't think Pot of Desires is going to hurt you too much. So, yeah. 
uh, two will salamangrate uh, only because I didn't know what to put in for the 40th card so I figured I'd just bump this up to two and the fact that it just gives you uh, more extension in your plays it comes into clutch a lot so I really like it personally I mean it's a soul charge slash monster reborn and the fact that it helps you like uh, not waste away your normal summon so I definitely want to see this a little bit more often now so that's why I'm bumping it up to two got one circle it's only at one for a reason but Hopefully it could always, it, I'm hoping it can come back to two or three at least. Just two would actually be fine, honestly. And then lastly, uh, one Sanctuary. So, definitely great cards. I definitely recommend these. Oh, and last for the spells, three called by the grave, you know. Definitely got to avoid those hand traps. Hand traps are really nasty right now, so, yeah. Alright, so for traps, I'm only running five. I'm actually playing three copies of Solemn Strike. I was running Judgment for a while, but the reason I decided to take it off because Judgment was actually losing me a lot of games lately, and especially because of time, so I'd rather spend a little less cost because right now we're in a form where we're, we're dealing with a little bit more monster effects. Of course, we still got Sky Strikers being a back row heavy strategy. Technically, Pendulums too, but I guess with Pendulums, like once they Pendulum Summon, you strike that, then they lose all their cards. And also, and the fact that it also negates monster effects, I think this gives you a little bit more value. And then for the one of, I'm running one roar, negates anything, and one rage, and, you know, just for spot removal. So, yeah. Now, I'm not saying that Judgment was a bad card or anything. It really did help me quite a bit, but at times there were certain situations where I did lose, like I said. So, that's why I decided to cut it and just go strike. All right, so now we're moving on to the extra deck. Playing three Bailings. Definitely got to run this at three. Uh, three Sunlight Wolf. This is one of your main uh, sources of recursion. It recurs recurs any fire monster as long as it's summoned to any one of his arrows. So this card actually recycles Ash Blossom. And also, if it's linked away with itself, it recycles any one of your Salamander spells and traps. Two Heat Leo, just to spin back back row as well. And also, uh, can weaken your opponent's monsters. So definitely a good way just to uh, dish out some punishment there. Uh, for one of playing Hita, uh, Nightmare Phoenix. And Crusidia, Avermax, just because this card's just really good and it's actually still my favorite Link 4 monster, so I definitely recommend picking up one. I heard this is starting to spike up in price. I don't know if that's true or not, so uh, I'm definitely get one if you already if you don't have one already. So yeah, uh, for the Xyz, playing two Mirastalio, uh, you definitely want to bring this card out as quickly as you can. This gets your combos going, and yeah, Bist Dweller, really good against the Mirror Match. And really good against Orcus too, so definitely want to take full advantage of it. Uh, I took off Sun or not Sun well Violet Chimera because I'm not running any form of fusion cards in this deck anymore. Because in fact, I don't think any solid player is doing that now because it just doesn't do much anymore. So for my last card, I'm playing Gaga Ga Cowboy just to get that advantage on game three in case you know we run out of time. It's just a good way to dish out some more pain. So yeah, pretty nasty there. All right, so for the side deck. Uh, side deck's pretty self-explanatory. I did make some changes on it, though, just to get the better, uh, just to deal with, like, the meta for right now. So, against full combo decks, and Nibiru, you know, once they summon five times. With Orcas, you definitely need to time this correctly. You want to wait till they finish their combo. Don't do it mid-combo, because they could still come back. So, once they finish their combo, then you Nibiru them. But, against Guard Dragon decks, you definitely want to stop them, like, as soon as they bring out both LP and Pisty, and that's it. That's how you shut them down. And, again, it's just really good against combo-oriented decks. Really good against Thunders, too, because, you know, uh, they're mostly going to try to sit on, like, two or three Colossus, and you definitely need to get off, get those off the field as quickly as you can. Uh, three Artifact Lantia, another good card to shut down any form of Thunder deck. Orcus as well. Even Sky Strikers can't have a hard time playing this because, you know, they can't Shark Cannon your monsters. Because they're gonna always going to, when it comes to Salad, they always try to Shark Cannon that, uh, that Sunlight Wolf, and you can't let that happen. Uh, two Panker Tops. I cut down Cosmic Cyclone just because, you know, well, I'm, I'll, I'll cut it down to two, I mean, but only because, again, like, we're not dealing with as many back row heavy decks, but they are still out there, so don't sleep on those and Diamond Rose or Penguin Chops. Uh, three was starting to break me out, so I decided to just cut it down to two because, like, with Ghost Bell, it's easy to side out. Cosmic Cyclone, I can easily take off one of my wills and maybe one of my other spells and traps, depending on what I get, need to take off. Maybe Coyote if I have to, so... Cosmic Cyclone, definitely good. Same thing with Evenly Match. A pretty card, pretty easy card to side in. I'm only running it at two, though, just because I don't want to see it too often. To deal with, like, Pendulum and Sky Striker decks, I got Anti-Spell Fragrance at two. 
and then lastly one imperial order and that's generally it so yeah well hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and i will catch you guys again next time